Good morning. Wow, what a beautiful day out. Has it been raining here all week? It rained on my trip out east all week and all back, but as I started back into Michigan, it was so beautiful, and I thought maybe they had sun the whole time we were gone, but no chance of it. Good to see the leaves here today. All right. Well, again, welcome, and this is a time for us to share our our community announcements. So I think Mark's got one for us. Mark, why don't you share with us? Good morning. Morning. I would like to talk about Mission Conference Week. Hopefully most of you have seen our banner out front. Uh, Mission Conference Week is a new endeavor for us and we're very excited about it. Uh, beginning on Sunday, April 26th, through that week, and then the auction will be on May 2nd and then May 3rd. Both Sundays we will have a, a series of missionaries here representing local and some of our um, outer reach programs. And it's just going to be an exciting week for us. So we encourage all of you to attend and attend both services if possible because the, the mission speakers will be different from service to service. And then uh, the I guess the gem of the week hopefully will be the mission auction. And if you didn't see when you came in, there are forms in back for donations to fill out if you would like to do that. Um, if God comes to your heart and says this is something that we want to support, uh, we would appreciate any donation that you would like to make. And most importantly is to be here on the night of May 2nd for the auction itself. We will have a dinner with the Boy Scouts and we will have a new program this year which is the cash and carry so there will be a lot of smaller priced items that you can literally pick up and carry away with you so we look forward to that week we're excited about it and we ask you to join us thank you great thanks mark other announcements that we need to hold up yes um, yesterday we had uh, the men from the United Methodist churches around the area uh, meet here for their monthly uh, breakfast. Um, and uh, last count, I think we had approximately 70 people here. Good uh, they're a lot of people are a public did a great deal yeah. to make this happen, make it run smoothly. And I'd like to recognize them if I could, particularly the, the ladies who uh, served the breakfast for us, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, that would include Diane Tennant and her granddaughter, who was here. Uh, Ingrid Port, I don't think she's here this morning. Uh, Kay Anderson, Sam Haywood, please. And uh, Ms. Marilyn Swanson, and uh, uh, Vanessa Hearns. And of course, we can't forget uh, Todd, who had uh, a fantastic biscuit uh, gravy. It was, it was delicious. Uh, so thank you, ladies, and Todd, for the breakfast. And uh, we had a couple of other people here that were involved, too. There was uh, Matt Vanderbilt was here who supplied the music and entertainment for us. Uh, Kevin Dick was, uh, gave a uh, very inspiring um, uh, message. And uh, Nick Zelensky did our uh, video operation. So thank you all uh, for a fantastic thing. And everybody was really glad to be here. <laughs> Now let me see, I think we have a couple of things today. Do we have an out outdoor cleanup today, uh, right after service? So if you haven't come dressed to do that, but you'd like to be a part of it when you head home, come on right back and, and join in, so be a part of that. Later today at 5 o'clock, also a potluck back here. So um, if uh, you're inclined, we've had such a great time with our potluck. So a fellowship potluck here. Is there an activity surrounding it or anything, Mark? Do we know? Yeah. Great. So yes. I know. I was just trying to figure out what things we didn't have uh, in front of us, and 39ers is this week. Then this is from February. So uh, do not do the things on the back of the bulletin. It's the first mistake that Wendy's ever made. She is absolutely fantastic. She doesn't do this typically, but she starts with a master and she must have used the February as a master. So don't come to any of these things or you'll be disappointed because they're not happening. So, okay. Great. 
Blood drive on Tuesday, you saw the sign, yep, so remember that. Anything else we need to hold up for the good of the cause? Yes. Oh, yeah, the, some bells were used this week, yeah. I just wanted to see you to know that uh, there was a nationwide effort on the 9th at 3.15 in the afternoon uh, to play bells if you had them at the church for four minutes in honor of the 150th anniversary of the end of the Civil War. So our bells played uh, some patriotic hymns and then we sounded taps on a bugle across the town at uh, approximately 3.15. Yes, yes. And as we come up uh, to the prayer time uh, in our service, um, we'll be talking about another time that we're using the bells in our, our church. It looks like this Saturday we will we will be having a funeral. I, um, th- early this morning, Elvira Dykstra passed. And I don't know for sure that it will be on Saturday, but that's what the family is trying to plan. What a loss to our congregation, let alone to her family and her closest friends. But, you know, when you get to be, what, 96, um, she's lost a lot of her friends, and she's probably on her third or fourth set of friends by now, you know. And uh, so she is just absolutely going to be missed by us. And the spot where she always sat, and her beautiful sweaters, and she just dressed, uh, just really looked so beautiful every week. And so I was with her late into the evening last night, and uh, she was very calm and rested, And but her body was wearing out. She died uh, just a little before 7 this morning. So let's keep her family in our prayers. They are really celebrating her life, even at this difficult moment, and it looks like Saturday will be a time when we'll gather back here for a service. So that's another thing that we'll just keep in our schedule and our minds and hearts, okay? Great. Any other things to hold up that we want to remember today? We all set. Let's take a moment and let's greet our friends and neighbors, and I'll call you back in a minute. Hi, Caroline. Good to see you. Are you well? I'm well, too. I've been on the road all week, so, yeah. Out to New York and then down to um, Williamsburg. Okay. All right. Lots of, yeah. But it was, it was good to be back. For those of you who thought that Easter was over, this is the second Sunday of Easter. It's not just a day. It is a season, and we'll talk more with the children about that in a few minutes. But please, if you're able, stand and join with me in our call to worship for this second Sunday of Easter. The season of Easter is here. In the weeks ahead, help us, Lord, to more fully embrace the truth of the Easter miracle. And may we open our hearts and receive God's breath of new life. Lord, help us to hear your words Come, let us worship the Lord with great joy. Praise God. Amen. Christ is risen. Let's join our, our song this morning. Shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection. 
may be seated. If you would join with me in prayer in bold, in the bold print. Breathe the breath of life of your new life into us, O Lord, that we may feel the power of your love and the awesome glory of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Prepare us to receive your blessing and then to go from this place to be a blessing to others. We confess that we, far too often, want proof for everything, O Lord. We want proof that someone loves us. We want proof that we can trust others. We want proof that everything in life is going to turn out all right. It's easy for us to point our finger at Thomas, who was honest about his fears and uncertainties. He had seen so much healing and hope, but those hopes seemed dashed when Jesus died. Even the news of Jesus' resurrection did not completely lift the darkness from Thomas's life. Lord, as you said to him, peace, be still. Do not doubt, but believe. Speak also to us. Forgive our unbelief. Help us to trust in you with our whole heart, our mind, and spirit, and soul. Hear the good news. Peace, be still. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus came to bring us new life. Believe in him and receive the blessing of hope and peace. Amen. I'd like to invite my young friends to come forward. Come on down, you guys. Come on down. Any kids that are here are welcome to come on down. I've got a gift for you today, so you don't want to miss it. All right. This is a good day to be here. I thought I might scoop in a couple more. All right. So last Sunday was what? Easter. Last Sunday was Easter. We had a great Easter in many ways. I hope you did, and, and uh, I know I did. But sometimes we think in terms of, of Easter being the end of it. It's over. We've had the, the holiday. It's done. It's, sometimes we think of that about Christmas as well. But at Christmas, something different, very different than Easter happens. What happens on Christmas? We get presents. Well, yes, we get presents. But what is the story behind all of our presents? What occurs on Christmas? Jesus' birthday. It's exactly right. Jesus' birthday. And so just like with your birthday, Christmas was the beginning of something. And we might think that, you know, that it's over. January comes and Christmas happened and it's done. But in the story, we hear how Jesus grows up and he becomes a a young man and then he becomes a teacher. Later on, he faces great opposition and difficulties and trials and eventually he's crucified on the cross, and he dies. And people thought that was the end, but we know that the story doesn't even end there. That beyond our capacity to understand, Jesus comes back from the dead. And that's the day of Easter that we celebrate, that he he arose. And we might think that Easter happens, and that day of resurrection occurs, and that it's all over, but actually it continues forward. Every Sunday we come to this place, and we mention this on Easter at the sunrise service, when we gather early in the morning out in the garden area, we remember the garden area where the women went early in the morning on that first Sunday after his death. Early that morning they went out to the garden, and they found that the stone of the tomb in the garden had been rolled away, And the tomb was empty. Jesus had rose from the dead. And we've been going back, in a sense, to the tomb every Sunday morning ever since and proclaiming it empty. 
So every Sunday that we come here is in one sense what's been called for centuries a little Easter. It's a really special thing. It's why we meet on Sunday mornings to remember that one day someone went and we learned the most important message that would ever be taught to us that Jesus Christ lives. And because he lives, we live also. So last week, I forgot something. And you know I forgot it because you're the only one that knew that. Afterwards, we talked about it. Last week, I forgot to give out our, our usual Easter present. So there'll be kids that aren't here today because they're on spring break and that kind of stuff, and I get that. But we'll make sure that they get one afterwards. But what I want to make sure that you guys get is one of our Easter books. Um, each year we give out an Easter book, so I want you to have one of these. You can have that. Do you want that? You can take it. Would you like one? Would you like one? And you got one already, because you were here late last time, so I remembered it. And this story will tell you and remind you of the Easter story. And if it's a little bit difficult reading, you find somebody to read with you, and that's fun too. Or if you know of somebody that can't read, and you can, it's a fun book to read to them. And it tells the Easter story. So let's remember that Easter isn't just one day. It's a beginning. It's a very important beginning. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the young people of this church and for all the ways in which they remind us of some of the most basic things that we need to know. Watch over us in all things and help us as we pray together the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for coming out. These books will be in the back. If some of you have someone you're visiting, a grandchild or someone that's going to be at your house, and you'd like to have a copy of this book, feel free to take them with you, and we'll make sure that the young people that aren't here today also receive them, so they'll be back there. It's a time for us to pray together, a time for us to share the things that we've brought with us, the prayers, the joys, and concerns. What are the prayers that we have with us today? Yes. Um, Bill and Val Waller are celebrating their 63rd wedding anniversary today. Aww. <laughs> Congratulations. That's wonderful. Yeah, we have a ways to go. <laughs> Any other prayers we hold up? Yes. We would like prayers for a good friend of ours who's almost 61. His name is Ted, and he had a stroke just as the one we kind of talked about. Okay, prayers for Ted who's had a stroke, and uh, let's keep him and his family in our prayers and the caregivers. That, yes. Okay, thank you, Shirley. For, for Jim, let's continue to keep him in our prayers as he's been really sick since he's gotten home. Yes. I'd like to have Cleve never delivered his point from home to a room. Keep Cleve in our prayers. You know, he took an awful fall. Um, when he came out on his porch, some of you, most of you, many of you know the story, but he slipped on the ice here now about three or four weeks ago, maybe longer. And he really broke a lot of ribs. And that's a terribly painful thing. She came out to help him when she finally found out he's out there. And she fell down, too, because the ice was so bad. She was all right. But um, let's keep the Henrys in our prayers and uh, for his continued healing. He was in the hospital for a week. And, um, you know, to be in the hospital for a week, you think a broken rib, it's not much. But this was, this was awful. So keep him in your prayers. Who else? Yes.
That's right. You've, you've run out of shoulders to work on, haven't you? You've had surgeries on each of them now, and the second one, that slip and grab into the mailbox, uh, it was a pretty bad one, I understand. It was a lot worse once they got in there, and trying to put it back together was not easy. So our prayers are with you guys in the midst of it, so we're thinking of you. Who else? Who else? Yes. It's you, yes. Absolutely, and, and they did hold the phone up to Elvira the other day so um, Pearl could say a few things to her. And, you know, it, it's, technology is wonderful, but it's not like being there. So let's keep her in our thoughts as she grieves these losses. That's tough for, for Pearl. Who else do we pray for? Who else are we holding up? Yes. Radiation. Wow, Ted has had an awful challenge. Let's continue to keep Ted in our prayers for these treatments he's having. Anybody else? Yes. Let's keep Linda in our prayers at this time as she adjusts so everything that's going on. Let's, yes. That's great. I had such a delightful visit with him on Monday before I took off on my, on my little outing. And what a great man. He is interesting. I could listen to stuff he would talk about all day long. Just let's keep him in our prayers and Sally as well as she offers care. Yes. One more celebration. Uh, Wes Collins, one of our Boy Scouts, helped continue the legacy of this church this week by receiving his uh, Eagle Scout Award. Oh. Wow, that is great news. Let's keep him in our prayers because this, you know, is supposed to be a launching pad for great things in his life. Uh, a young man like this showing us he's got these capabilities is going to go far. So let's just keep him in our prayers. Yes. Oh, so much. So much going on, decisions, decisions. And that was our trip this week. You know, we headed out east to look at graduate schools for Matt. So keep him in your prayers. He's looking, he's looking at a couple, and this last, this last school he'll look at, um, he called me a few months ago, and he says, Dad, I have a problem. And I said, what is that? And he says, well, he says, Duke is one of the schools I'm looking at, but he says, I've got to sort out whether they're a really great law school or whether they just have a really great basketball team. <laughs> And, uh, he, he, you know, this is good because he understands his problem. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the first step in dealing with it. But then they went and won everything. So this has not helped him, I don't think. So keep, keep Matthew in your thoughts and, and prayers. Other people we hold up. Yes. Yeah.
Rick's had ongoing challenges, so let's keep him and, and let's keep Laura in our prayers as well, both of them. Others that we hold up, you guys are such a praying group today. It's really, you know, it's important we take time for our prayers. I'll be gathering today in a, in a phone call uh, with a group of, of trustees for the Lake Louise United Methodist Camp. Some of you know I'm the president of the board there, and I've had a 40-year or more relationship with that camp. Uh, the, the federal government selected Lake Louise, part of its properties, it's over 2,000 acres, and every year they look at projects around the country where there will be land that will be set aside and kept in perpetuity as rugged kind of woodsy forest land, and part of the land, about 500 of our acres, um, were identified, and it's taken seven or eight years for us to come to this place. Uh, the federal government is ready to hand us a $900,000 check if we will keep that land as woods from now and forever. We've got lots of other land. It's only a portion of the Lake Louise properties, but there is a lot of questioning whether we should do this or not. So please keep the trustees of our board in your prayers. The, the things that can happen with the resources can be amazing, and the woods are what we want anyway, so I'll be interested to see where it goes. What a great time to be a part of that ministry. So uh, give me wisdom, please, and pray for that as, as I lead this group in this next set of decisions we make. Any other prayers that we hold up? Any other things we remember today? Well, let's come together then in a time of prayer. Start with a prayer song. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet sound in your Lord, we do love you. But Lord, we know that our love is, is often weak and unstable, but Lord, your love for us is, is so complete and so full and so rich. Help us to experience that and to know that it's trustworthy in all places, in all ways, in all things. Lord, as we come before you this day and we remember the Apostle Thomas and we remember that Sometimes he questioned, help us, Lord, to, to dig deep into the questions that we have as well, to trust our capacity to ask and to respond. Lord, there's nothing that we can ask that hasn't been asked a million times over. Help us to live completely within a sense of completeness in your kingdom. Lord, watch over us as a church that we are a church that's willing to step out and take risks and be everything constructive and building and positive in this community and beyond. Help us to be a voice in the midst of voices that would tear down instead of build up. Lord, hear our prayers for our loved ones and Hear our prayers for those who we remember around this world who struggle in such profound ways. Help us to make a difference. These prayers, Lord, we hold up in your holy name. Amen.
I'll be reading this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Hear now the words of Jesus. And when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have seen and yet have come, have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. There are so many directions for us to go with our reading today. I can kind of move to you because you guys are a little bit far back in the room. So this is portable. It's handy. And I'd like to run at several things today, but I'm going to look at, at just a narrow portion of what's before us. Rick Lamberg, pastor of First Presbyterian Church in, in Casa Grande, Arizona, describes himself as a Presbyterian by earthquake. He explains that his grandmother, a Baptist, moved herself and the family from Iowa to California many years before. After the move, a Presbyterian pastor came to the house and he invited her to come to church. I'm a Baptist, she said, and it'll take an act of God to make me to change. While they were chatting, the earth started to shake and the house (laughs) started to shake. And before their little gathering was over, she said, Where do I sign up? (laughs) Sometimes I wish faith were that easy. Sometimes I wish it were that clear. Don't you? Sometimes I wish God would just give us some unmistakable sign, perhaps maybe not an earthquake, but something less frightening, an indication of God's interest in our lives. But our reading today reminds us that blessed are the believers. We'll talk other times about the doubters, although we'll bump into it a little bit today. So often when we look at this important passage in John's Gospel, we focus on Thomas's doubts and we say, I can identify with Thomas, because we all can. We, we all have our doubts. And But when we focus only on that part, there's so much more for us to take a look at. Today I want to look at some important words of Jesus. Jesus 
said to Thomas, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who haven't seen and yet they believe. So today we're reminded our blessed are the believers. Now, I'm not talking about the smugly self-righteous believers or about the boastful pious who have all the answers to all the questions and even answers to questions nobody's asking. Rather, I'm talking about people who've come to grips with their doubts in an honest and forthright way and have, have made a commitment of their will to trust in the care of a loving and a grace-filled God who's always beyond our full understanding. I like how author C.S. Lewis put it in his book and later on would be in the movie, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I don't know if you read that book or read it to your kids, but there's this line, it's just a simple line, but it stands out in my mind. It's one of those animal characters, you know, talking to Lucy, the little girl, and he says, We have nothing if not belief. We have nothing, if not belief. And and think about that in your own lives, the things that you have to trust, the things that you have to believe. They talk about basic faith as we move even beyond our, our Christian beliefs, the faith that every time I take a step that the earth will be there to receive my foot as it lands, or that we believe that that as we breathe, there'll be something we can forget about it. We trust that everything is going to kind of click and go forward. Belief is at the very foundation of our being. And of course, more complex beliefs arise from there and until we get to things that are about our faith structures in life. Blessed are the believers. But of course we all have doubts. All of us do. Sometimes I feel like the British philosopher and mathematician Bertrand Russell, who was once asked what he would say as an atheist if he all of a sudden, as he died, appeared before the throne of God. What would he say to God? And Russell said, I think I'd say, why did you make the evidence of your existence so insufficient? And I think if we think long enough and deep enough, all of us in some ways have asked that question. God, why isn't it just so clear? There's a part of all of us that says with Thomas, unless I see his hands and I see and feel his side, I won't believe. We long for certainty in all parts of our lives. But we can rest assured that life is probably the way it is for a reason. And I think there are many. I just want to talk about a few today. If God's aim is to produce mature spirits, it kind of makes sense that we would need to go through some conditioning, like in any other thing in life. The kind of certainty that I crave would likely keep me continually spiritually immature, I think. If a parent's always there explaining away all the mysteries, to resolve every crisis, to confirm every, to comfort every sorrow, to kiss away every owie, the child will never develop the capacity to step out and diligently seek answers on their own. At some point, we're not going to be there. At some point, a child has to develop a sense of autonomy. And I wonder if sometimes faith isn't that way. Our our need to stretch for understanding may be essential to all forms of growth, including spiritual growth. The fact that the answers don't just jump off the page, that the answers aren't always right there, that I have to work hard to find satisfaction, and even sometimes in the midst of my hard work, at the end of a long day or week or year or even life, I don't have all the answers, maybe the the exercise has been well, well invested. This is to say that mature faith has careful thought as a, 
as a central component, not just blind following. God gave us minds to protect us from gullibility to every strange idea that comes down the pike. We need to closely examine everything new. This is true. You know, whether it comes from a preacher or a politician or a professor or a friend or a, a news publication, and believe it or not, even if you read it on the Internet, it's not necessarily true. Or see it on television, it's not necessarily true. God wants us to use our minds. That's why we have these amazing capacities to think and reflect and ask questions. And that's why as a teacher, you know, we always say there's no such thing as a, what, a dumb question. Because questioning is such a core human value. And it's odd for, to me that, that there are many religious belief systems that say don't question it. I'll feed it to you and you can go from there. I'll tell you what to believe. But I really, really cherish a belief system that says go ahead, question, and we'll talk about it. Part of our theological task as Christians is to work toward developing an understanding and to begin to resolve in our own mind what, what it is we do believe our credo, I believe. And to decide to whom we're committed. Blessed are the believers. That, that's the first thing that I want us to embrace this morning. And there's a second. The believers in turn are to be a blessing in the world. It's not enough that we would believe but that in the midst of our beliefs, the world will be the beneficiary. Where has there ever been a monument erected to the cynic or the critic or to the perpetual doubter in this world? As someone once said, the, the one who pulls the oars has no time to rock the boat. Believers are those who pull on the oars. Not just frantic pulls, but pulls that have clear, intentional direction to them. Pulls which are leading somewhere meaningful. Believers are those who know that the world can still be a better place and, and they're willing to expend themselves to make it that way. They're those who actually become the change that they would like to see doesn't mean it's going to be easy. I, I'm not sure I've ever seen anywhere in our gospel that really it becomes easier when we challenge and we change. I like the poem called Wreckers and Builders. Maybe some of you have heard this poem, but I like it, and here's how it goes. I watched them tearing a building down, a gang of men in a busy town, with a ho-heave-ho ho and a lusty yell, they swung a beam and a sidewall fell. I asked the foreman, are these men skilled as the men you'd hire if you had to build? He gave me a laugh and he said, no indeed, just common labor is all I need. I can easily wreck in a day or two what builders have taken a year to do. And I thought to myself, as I went my way, which of these two roles have I tried to play? Am I a builder who works with care, measuring life by the rule in the square? Am I shaping my deeds by a well-made plan, patiently doing the best I can? Or am I a wrecker who walks the town content with the labor of tearing down? Consider our own society. Who have the builders been? Who constructs the hospitals and the great universities and the social service agencies and the churches and so many other places? Look closely and I am sure that you'll see that behind every amazing institution we'll find persons who hold in their heart not cynicism but hope, not hostility but love, not selfish gain but hearts of servanthood. Believers are people who know that if they make this 
world a better place for their neighbors, they'll also make it better for themselves. They've learned that the path to true greatness is blazed with selfless service. There was a student at a Bible college in the Philippines and he became disturbed over the condition of the, of the men's bathroom. Since they always seemed to be neglected in the, in the cleaning routine, nobody seemed to be paying any attention to them. And when nothing was done to eliminate the filth, he, he took matters into his own hands and he, he complained to the principal of the school. A, a little while later, he noticed, this student did, that the problem was being corrected that the bathrooms were much cleaner, but he also noticed that the man with the mop and the pail was the principal himself. Later the student commented, I thought that he would simply call a janitor, but he cleaned the toilets himself. It was a major lesson for me on being a servant and of course it raised a question in my own mind as to why I hadn't taken care of the problem myself. In the soaring language of Dr. Martin Luther King, everyone can be great because everyone can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your nouns and your verbs agree to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Reverend King went on to say, when evil people plot, good people plan. When evil people bomb and burn, good people must build and Behind. When evil people shout words of hatred, good people must commit themselves to the glory of love. My friends, those are words to live by. Those are wor words to build a world by. Newscaster David Brinkley, a long time ago, once put it this way, and we kind of carry these words, I think, forward in our kind of collective wisdom and knowledge. He said, a successful person is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at him or her. I wonder where we are this morning. On the side of the cynics or on the side of the believers? It takes no particular strength of character to say, unless I put my finger in his hand or in his side, I won't believe. It does take strength of character to eventually come to the place where any one of us can say, I don't have all the answers, but I know who is making this world a better place. It's those who are following this itinerant preacher from Galilee. And I want to take my stand with them. I don't have all the answers, but I'll take my stand with those who believe this beautiful world was somehow the creation of a good and loving God. I don't have all the answers, but I believe that the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary and the empty garden tomb has somehow changed the world forever. I don't have all the answers, but put me down as a believer. You don't have to know it all to believe. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd invite the ushers to come forward to take today's offering.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Precious Lord, these gifts which are set on this table are gifts which we give, and they are wonderfully gifts which you have given for us. Lord, help us in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine. Remember all you have first given to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Communion in our fellowship is something that all people are invited to. These are open tables. This is a place where you can come. We're not a church that has a railing. I often wish wish that we did, and we're talking about how we might someday have one. But we have these tables that give you an opportunity to come up and to pray and to prepare and to receive. We're going to invite you to come forward. Anybody that's here is welcome to come. You're not required to come. And you can gather around a table as you see space, and you can say a prayer if you'd like and prepare. There's regular and gluten-free um, wafers, and there's the, the juice, which, which we refer to as wine. And as you come, we come to remember. We remember a time when, when Jesus, in that last meal that he celebrated with his disciples, he took the bread And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same fashion, after supper, he took the cup. And again, after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant, the blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit on us gathered here out of love for you that we might know in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine your spirit that changes our lives. Lord, watch over us. In your name we pray. Amen. I would invite my servers to come forward to the tables. As you come to receive, there's somebody at each table. There's even a smaller table over here. If that's easier for you, great. If it's a good place for a family to gather with children, that's great too. Um, Come. Uh, The ushers will send you. And feel free to be a part of this moment. Everything is ready. If you'd like to receive in your pew, I'll go around and offer it in that location. Just raise your hand so I can find you. Body and blood. Raise your hand if you'd like to receive in your pew. The body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The body and blood of Christ, praise be to God. The body and blood of Christ, broken and shed as a sign of God's love. Thanks be to God. Body and blood broken and shed. Are there others who would receive in the pew today? The bread. You can take one of those and the cup poured out for you and for many. For God is with you. Thanks be to God.
the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation broken and poured out for you, Jesus. For God is with you. Thanks be to God. for you, George. Amen. It's a sign of God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Stand with me and we'll sing our closing hymn, Christ is Alive. Christ is alive, let Christians sing his cross and death. Now let us go from this place in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go from this place in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.